Hello all, my name is Yash and in the previous video you have seen how the coroutine scope works and in this video we'll be learning about the coroutine builders as well as dispatchers. So we'll first start with the dispatchers, how dispatchers works. Uh, they are pretty much easy. So and then we'll move into the coroutine builders, like the ways we launch a coroutine, we can say that. So yeah, let's get started. This is our main activity. We have already added the dependencies in the previous video for coroutines. Now in the main activity, I'll try to launch the global scope coroutine and uh, we can print the statement like coroutine and here we can say that inside global scope. Instead of this uh, statement, let's print the coroutine context. So this will gonna basically tell us the dispatchers. Now let's try to run this code. And we can see the output as dispatches.default. Now what is default? From where did it came from? Let me tell you a few things here about the dispatchers. So dispatchers uh, specifies the way we are launching a core routine. So if, if we are launching a core routine, there has to be a way, right? I mean, we have to launch it in a main thread or we have to launch in a background thread or in a separate thread or like in which way we want to launch it. So there are mainly three types of dispatchers here. Uh, we have uh, main, main dispatcher, we have default dispatcher, and then we have IO dispatcher. So this main says that, so let's suppose we have something that requires to run in the main thread. So Let's suppose if we are dealing with the views, then we can say that uh, we have to launch our core routine in a main thread. Then we can use dispatches.main. So this basically helps us to perform the main thread operations that generally requires the main thread. Now comes the dispatcher.default. So this dispatches.default, we use this generally in, in case of uh, any CPU intensive task. So there are a number of items in the list and that list is quite large list. Let's suppose it has millions of items in that. So it's a CPU intensive task that basically requires a lot of memory and uh, and the power of CPU. In these type of heavy CPU task, we generally prefer to use dispatches.default. So we can say that CPU intensive task. And then comes this uh, dispatches.io. So this is the mostly used core routine dispatches because we generally use core routine for performing any background operation. So we generally prefer to make those calls in a separate thread instead of a main one, separate thread. So these are the basic three types of dispatches we have. Now by default, if we have not given any dispatcher to this core routine, so here we have launched the core routine using global scope.launch and we haven't specified any dispatchers here. So dispatchers usually we specify after this launch. So, but here we haven't specified any that that is the reason why it has taken the default dispatcher so if we are not providing any dispatcher by default it takes default so now here uh, let's suppose we have provided the dispatches.io and now try to run the project again let's see if this value gets changed so yeah we can see that dispatches.io is here that simply means that uh, this value got changed and same applies to the dispatcher.main so that's about on a high level overview of dispatchers. Apart from this, now let's move on to our second concept, which is core routine builder. So now what are the core routine builders? So there are a few ways of launching a core routine. So like, for example, here we have used global scope dot launch. Now this launch is nothing but the core routine builder. So we have this launch here. Now this global scope dot launch will gonna launch a core routine anyways. So let me remove these dispatchers now. And uh, let's remove this also. Now we have the simple global scope dot launch. Now this launch is a core routine builder. So there are three types of core routine builder which we generally use. First is launch, second is async, and third is run blocking. So these three are mostly used core routine builders. Now this launch is uh, something which says that fire and forget. This means that if we are launching a core routine using launch keyword, that means we won't get anything in return from this. That is the reason why it is also called as fire and forget call. That means we are firing a core routine and we are forgetting about it because we are not expecting anything in return from that particular call. So let me tell you about the example of this. So let's take the real example of it. So here we are using global scope dot launch. 
and as we have discussed this launch is also known as fire and forget so we won't be getting anything in return from this function so let's see how this function works so here as we can see that this function is returning job interface so it's an interface basically this launch function returns the job interface so let's try to uh, check what we get inside the job so as of now we have taken this job here basically we can uh, use this job value to track the coroutine we cannot have any computational value from this i have written here yash so this doesn't mean that after finishing the, this coroutine's job this will gonna return return this particular string no because we are using launch here now but what's the use of this job if uh, so basically if we want to track this particular coroutine we can use this job instance how we can use job dot join like this because this join function will gonna help us to wait till the time this particular core routine is finished. For the better understanding, let's use it inside the uh, main function. If I'm writing here a job and inside the main function, I've written the same piece of code here. Now I'll try to print. Now I'll try to print core routine finished. Okay and here I can print that coroutine started let's run this code and we can see that first it prints coroutine finished and then it print coroutine started it, it is executing this line first and then this line first so obviously we don't want in this way right now what if uh, we want in a way that uh, we have to print this first like the started one and then we have to finish and then we have to print this uh, this statement of finished coroutine so due to this we have to track this particular coroutine and that we can do by using this job job dot join so whenever the control comes here this particular job dot join will gonna wait for this particular coroutine to get finished completely and then it will gonna execute the next line so let's so now let's see let's make it print ln for better readability now i'll try to run this code again let's see now what happens so see printed the core routine started first and then core routine finished even if we can apply the delay function of two seconds then also it will gonna print this first and then it will want to wait for two seconds like this and then this core routine finished so that is how this uh, job dot join works also like there are a few functions like cancel and all we can cancel this particular core routine but it's a overall different concept we can discuss in another other video so that's all about this launch function so this is basically for any api call where we are not expecting any results from that particular api we just wanted to push the data into the server and we have to forget about it now let's see about the second uh, function so now how to launch a core routine using async builder so what you have to do is just replace this launch with async and that's it the job is done the only difference between them is that this particular async will gonna return us the value from the call inside this async we can see that this is returning the deferred object now what is deferred it is again the interface and it is implementing the job interface so now this deferred will gonna return us something from the call so let's take the deferred value inside this let's rename it to job deferred for better understanding job deferred will gonna hold the value of this now what is the value this particular core routine is returning so this particular block will gonna return the last statement of the block so let's suppose if i'm writing 10 here we're gonna return this 10 value inside this job deferred instance so this 10 will gonna return into it and this job deferred will uh, will be having the value of 10 get the value from this we have to use the await function so this await function will gonna wait for this particular core routine to get finished and show the value whatever this particular block of core routine had returned so now let's try to print this core routine started it waited for this two second let's remove this delay as of now so here write my name here now this is the last statement of this block so ideally this should get inserted into this and uh, this will show in the log cat now if i'll try to print this so let's see so yeah you can see my name got printed here that means simply we are returning the last value from here so that is how this async will gonna work so if you are expecting any value from the api any responses or something you can use this async uh, builder in your code it will return something from it will return something and this is so this one is the fire and forget will won't return anything async it will gonna return something and run blocking so run blocking is something which will gonna block your current thread 
and execute whatever the code you have written inside this particular block. So this will gonna block the current thread, which is obviously we don't want to do. So this run blocking is something which uh, we do not even write in the production code. Also the Google team suggests that do not use this run blocking in your production code because this will gonna block the current thread and your application will gonna behave uh, in a bad way. So hence we does not use this run blocking in the production code. Then you might be thinking what's the use of this run blocking, why they've introduced it. So let's see. So let's go inside this run blocking and see what they have written here. So this run blocking runs a new coroutine and blocks the current thread until its completion. And it is also saying that at the last, it is to be used in main functions and in the test. So this was designed to use in a test classes as well as in a main function. So if you have seen my example in the main function, I have used this run blocking to show you these examples. So that's how we can use this run blocking inside the main function for just any experimentation purpose or if you have to show something to someone you can show uh, that's how we can use run blocking here and second place is in the test classes so while writing the test cases for core routines we have to deal with the threads so we have to deal with core routines as well as thread and most of the time we want that particular thread to wait until that core routine is finished for those type of test cases we generally use this run blocking in the test file so this is all about the core routine builders as well as the dispatchers and one last thing I want to tell you in this, inside this run blocking, let's suppose I've removed all this and I'll try to launch the coroutine directly without using any scope. So now what this means, so this simply means that this is a child coroutine and this is a parent coroutine. So child coroutine will gonna inherit all the values of its parent coroutine. So let me print here the thread name and Let's delay this job for one second to run this. Now let's try to run this main function. So we can see uh, the output we have got is main. How is this possible that this particular launch is running on the main thread? Because obviously coroutine launches in a different thread, right? But here we can see that uh, run blocking, we, are, we have initiated the run blocking and it is a parent of this particular launch coroutine. So that is how it has taken this uh, main thread from it. But if I would have given the dispatches.io, this means that IO works on a different thread. So let's try to run and check the name. So now you can see there's a default dispatcher worker. This means that it is not running in the main thread now because, because we have given the dispatches.io. So I've shown you this because um, it is a very important thing to know that uh, the child coroutines or the nested coroutines, if we haven't given any values to the nested coroutines or the child coroutines, they will gonna inherit all the values from their parents. So that's how it works. So yeah, that, that is all about the coroutine builders as well as dispatchers. And uh, I hope you have learned something new in this video. In the next video, we're gonna learn how to handle the exceptions in the coroutine. Also, that is one of the most important topic in coroutine uh, because the exception handling in coroutine is a bit different than the legacy try catch blocks. So do not forget to miss that particular video. So I'll take a leave now. Have a great day.